uh, is that right? Vess. Vess in Toronto. Vess, great to have you with us. I've never been to Toronto. I've always wanted to go. Gorgeous city. We'd love to uh, roll out the carpet for you, Rush. I want you to know that there's many, many Canadians who love listening to you because we understand that without a strong America, there's uh, no free world. So God bless you, my friend. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Uh, here's a quick story. Uh, it goes back to November 2012. I was in Houston for a business meeting, and a friend of mine had a ticket to go see Gorbachev speak at Rice University. Now, I didn't want to go see Gorby, but uh, what the heck, I went. I sat in the back row, and I couldn't believe what I saw. 1,500 people were there, and for one hour straight, Gorby uh, just bashed America, and he bashed Romney, and he all but told people to vote for Obama. Now, I was stunned. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Why you know, were you stunned? Well, uh, many standing ovations in Houston. I thought Houston was a real capitalist oil kind of uh, headquarters. Well, like, not on the university campuses. Though. Yeah. Well, standing ovations galore. Uh, he all but told people to vote Obama. But what strikes me is that no one complained about that. Absolutely no one. You heard no Democrat complain about Russian interference or collusion. Uh, uh, and uh, it seems to me that that's uh, hypocrisy at its best. That's an interesting take on it. Uh, I, I met Gorbachev in Houston. Um, it was at the 80th birthday party for George H.W. Poppy Bush. And it was at the ballpark there. Um, What's the, uh, was it Reliance? Not Reliance. What's the, um, I can't remember the baseball part, but anyway, it was there. And James Baker introduced me to uh, Gorbachev. And he had his same old translator that was that was with him from the, back in the 80s when he was uh, running the Soviet Union. And he was, and he was having the greatest time. He was the biggest buddy of George H.W. Bush. I mean, they were close buddies. And he was there the next day when H.W. did his parachute trick out there, but Gorbachev standing out there looking up at the sky, shading his eyes, and applauding like a school kid when Bush landed making the parachute jump. So Gorbachev has some connection to Houston. But I'm not through here. I'll take a break. We'll come back and, and react to your point. Gorbachev on campus, University in Houston, uh, University in Houston, I'm not sure which university he specified, urging 1,500 students to vote for Obama and against Romney. Why isn't that Russian collusion? Well, in the strict sense, Obama, uh, I'm sorry, Gorbachev, is not an official from the Russian government that we know of. He could well be on the spy payroll, but we don't know. But as such, as, as a non-official government uh, representative, it'd be a, be a tough case. But that's not the question. The question is, here is the former leader of the communist Soviet Union who regrets what happened there, urging students to vote for Barack Obama. Now, the media did its best to sanitize Gorbachev and, and make it look like Reagan posed the greatest threat to world safety and that, and that Gorbachev was the big savior, but it's the other way around. It's the exact other way around. And it's an example of what I feel. You know, we, we talk about Russian interference. That you, you can't have any more successful infiltration of the American college campus than that example. Our caller from Toronto was, was, was stunned to see it because in Texas and Houston, you know, oil economy, associate that with uh, superior capitalism and so forth, but not on campus.